Welcome to Quadratics Part 4. There's some different ideas, some new ideas, that I want to drop in for us that we're going to continue using as you learn more and more of the quadratics part. First, I want to zoom in over here and talk about, we call this the standard form of a quadratic. Where we see ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b, and c represent numbers we don't know in the problem yet. a is just the number out front of x squared, b is the number out front of regular x, and c is whatever number is just normal number hanging out at the end. Now the reason this is the quadratics standard form is because we have x squared. If you have x squared, we automatically have a quadratic equation. So when we come back over here, when you're asked to solve this equation, we see that, oh, I see x squared, I see x squared. So I know this is a quadratic, so I know that one side must be equal to zero before I continue. So I'm gonna draw my line and get my negative seven squared over to the other, to so the same side. I use my inverse operation by adding it. Now, since this is x squared, I have to keep in mind like terms. Remember from quadratics one, like terms, have the same variable, oh James, and exponent. He's trying to help. Okay, same variable and same exponent. So right here, if this is x squared, I'm gonna line it up with the x squared over here. So now negative three x squared plus seven x squared is four x squared. I haven't touched the 24x. I haven't touched the 32. Negative 7x squared plus 7x squared is 0. So I have one side equal to 0 now. Now ask yourself, how is this problem different than quadratics part 3? Well, the problem here is I have a number with x squared. That a value is not 1. So whenever you guys have an a value that's not one, you have a number with your x squared, you guys need to do a quick check for the greatest common factor, or as we will call it from now on, the GCF, the greatest common factor. So in here, when we think of the word factor, factor means multiplying. So I wanna ask myself, is there a number that's involved as a factor with all three of these numbers? And if it helps, start breaking down the possible ways you can multiply to these three different numbers and then pick out the biggest one that's in common. So I know that with 24, I can do six times four to get there. With 32, I know I can do eight times four. And with number four, I know I could do four times one. So I see here, I was able to break down all three of these numbers into a smaller little way to multiply it and now look here, they each have a four involved. So what I can do is factor out the four, which means I take that four that they have in common and I'm gonna bring it outside of parentheses so it looks like distribution. Now if I take the four out of this, I'm left with one x squared. If I take the four out of this, I'm left with six x. And if I take the four out of this, I take, I just have an eight. And when you guys factor out a number, you're just dividing. Four divided by four is one. 24 divided by four is six. 32 divided by four is eight. You're looking for the biggest number where you can divide all of those numbers nicely. Now, the inside of the parentheses looks just like the factoring we were doing. So we are ready to set up our box just like quadratics part three but we are going to ignore that four out front when we set up the box. So we're still just gonna take that x squared and then we're gonna take that eight. Now we have to figure out how to create our two boxes from that six x, so we'll use our little diamond puzzle. So we'll ask ourselves what multiplies to that last number and adds or subtracts to our middle number. I know four times two is eight, four plus two is six. So I know that these became the 4x and 2x. As remember, if you did this correctly, they should combine back to that 6x. 
So now we can start factoring. I know x times x is x squared. 4 times x is 4x. 2 times x is 2x. And then 4 times 2 is 8. So I have my factors of x plus 4 and x plus 2. But in order to keep your problem completely consistent, that 4 does need to come into your final answer here. And now I will take that bigger section. I'm running out of space on my wall. And now I will set each parentheses only equal to zero. And there's our final answer. All right, so I know I'm solving this equation. And the first thing I should think about as a smart mathematician is I see v squared and v squared. That automatically makes this quadratic, so I need one side equal to zero. So if that's a positive 6v, I will subtract that. And I will line up, because I remember my like terms have to have the same variable and exponent. So if that's regular v, I'll find the regular v on this side. And then I'll subtract that 7v squared. Since that's v squared, I will line that up with the v squared over here. Then minus 3. Regular number, I'll line it up with the regular number. So now I just have to finish all of that little subtraction I just set up. 9v squared minus 7v squared is 2v squared. Notice my exponent didn't change. When you add and subtract, exponents don't change, only when you multiply. 14v minus 6v is positive 8v. 9 minus 3 is positive 6 equals 6 minus 6 is 0. 7 minus 7 is 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. So we're good to continue. Now, as we discussed, before you should try and start factoring, check for a GCF, a greatest common factor. See if you can get that to be a nice 1v squared. So ask yourself, can you divide everything by that 2? Is that going to be the greatest common factor? Well, let's try. And when we do this, when we find the greatest common factor, you leave it outside of the parentheses. So then 2 divided by 2 is 1v squared. 8 divided by 2 is positive 4v. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And now the inside of the parentheses is what I will try and factor using our quadratics part three knowledge. So I know I have v squared, I have three. We don't know what goes here yet, so we need to use our diamond puzzle. What is gonna multiply to three and add or subtract to four? Three times one is three, three plus one is four. So here is three v and one v. v times v, v times three, v times one, 1 times 3 works out, so we know our factors are v plus 1 and v plus 3. But don't forget, guys, for equivalence, this will matter later in our quadratics adventure. Don't lose track of that, too, even though it is not going to affect our final answer. Then finally, we set each little parentheses equal to 0, and we solve that little equation that we set up. Since it was quadratic, I got one side equal to zero. Then I searched for that common factor. And once that was one V squared, I used our quadratics three factoring knowledge and then continued on.